Hi, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics video number 36. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, gateway models and review of disconnected models. Uh, the reason, number one reason for reviewing disconnected models is because there was some confusion with the release of uh, the first electrogravity video. There is part number two coming after this video. Uh, and I should have reviewed disconnected models uh, in, in more detail prior to that video. Uh, but I'm going to do it here anyway. Uh, and it's a required discussion for gateway models anyway. Uh, and then the remainder of this video, we're going to discuss what I called gateway models. So let's go back. What's a disconnected model? Well, a disconnected model, let's say for any of these models here, this is Coulomb's model and this is Newton's gravity model. You basically have one object that affects another across space. So let's say this object is creating a disturbance in space. So there's an emission of a disturbance into space that propagates, not travels, propagates through space. Eventually it's going to couple with the other object and affect the object. So the cause, and I'm using these terms loosely, is the emission of some disturbance into space and the effect is how that disturbance couples to the other object. Now it's a reciprocal process because this guy emits a disturbance into space that then couples with this guy. But how the cause couples to space uh, and how the effect couples to the target may not be symmetrical. Okay, so what would we say about gravity? Well, we said that the cause of gravity is the consumption of ether by the first object. And what we're going to show in part two, which is the next video, is that the effect of that ether being consumed by this object up here couples to the target through electromagnetic induction. That's going to be in EMV037, which is electrogravity part two. Let me give you an analogy. Suppose you had a bathtub full of water with a plug at one side and a little toy or paper boat over here. Well, the way gravity works is one object over here, and when we pull the plug out, is going to start consuming water. The water is going to go down the drain. The effect of the water going down the drain is going to take time because if this part of the water is going to go in, that's going to cause a uh, lack of water which is going to be filled by this water and so this propagation of the depletion of water is eventually going to travel and start moving the boat toward the drain. Okay, the boat does not move toward the drain because it is consuming water. It moves toward the drain for some completely different reason. So therefore the cause and the effect may be two completely different phenomena. Okay, but if this were masses in space, the effect of one on the other is reciprocal. Even though the individual causes and effects may be not symmetrical. I hope that was clear. So, what we learn is disconnected models must be split. Okay, also the constants must be split. In other words, uh, if we have this guy over here, if, in other words, if we're looking at the gravity model, then we can say that, well, the consumption of ether is related to some constant times the first mass. This is mass 1. This is mass 2. And we're looking at the force on 2 due to 1. Okay, so the disturbance, we're going to give the capital letter D for disturbance, is caused by mass 1 times some constant, we're going to call KD the disturbance constant, uh, which is going to be some kind of ether consumption model here. And then there should might be more to it than that and there probably is going to be a time lag equation that tells how quickly that disturbance gets to the other mass. Now on the other side that model for the coupling is going to call it behavior instead of using C for coupling. I do not want to confuse um, C with the speed of light. So we're going to use B for behavior. So the coupling of the effect um, is given by some constant we're going to call KB times some something to do with the mass of the second object times the disturbance that finally gets there. Okay, so 
in the end, we should be able to take these two models, multiply them together or whatever, and come back up with this. And therefore, kg is going to be a combination of these two constants here, whatever they may be. We're going to do that in a later video. I'm just trying to give you the idea of what a disconnected model means. It means that the mo disconnected model must be split into cause and effect, and that's going to require a split of the constants as well. And that's okay. So let's get talk about gateway models. A gateway model is a term I came up with to describe a model used to see deeper into nature to develop better models. And it, we could use an expression like there's gateway drugs, you know, where they say marijuana is the gateway drug to heroin, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I've got better analogies than that. One analogy is the Hauser analogy. Hauser is the big rope that moors a ship to a dock. And you can see by this old picture uh, from the uh, British Navy Yards, this rope is massive. There's no way a human being could pick up the end of this rope and toss it to the dock. It's just too big. So what do they do? They throw a heaving line, a smaller rope that can be thrown. Okay, and then what they do is then hook that up to a winch to haul the other rope across. So that's kind of what these gateway models are that we're going to be discussing. They're a way to get something across so you can pull the bigger model in so that the SS ethereal mechanics can be moored into dock. Uh, there's another way to describe gateway models through the evolution of normal tools that mankind developed. And let me start off this analogy. Suppose humans were stranded on a strange planet with absolutely nothing and no hope of rescue. How would they reestablish civilization? <clears throat> well, first they're going to find stones and forget there's, there's a little handle attached. Just look at the stone itself. They're going to start with a stone and they can't cut wood with it so they can't make a hammer yet. Um, so what they're going to do then is go find themselves a piece of obsidian and with that stone tool is to cleave off bits of the obsidian to create an axe. And this is from worldmuseumofman.org and then once they got the axe and they can cut sticks and they can improve both their axe and their stone hammer by putting a wood stick on it with you know all kinds of cords. And so what you can see here is one tool okay becomes an evolution to the next tool becomes an evolution to the next tool till eventually we can develop you know superior tools but just because we develop superior tools doesn't mean that's the end okay? so what are the gateway models that we're going to use for ethereal mechanics well new electromagnetism you know, and the reason why new electromagnetism is only a gateway model is you can see these are all disconnected models they're disconnected in time and space. Okay, so their only they, purpose they could serve for us, serve us, is as gateway models. We have to split all the causes and effects, and that's going to have ramifications to what these constants really mean. This can have ramifications to what really an electric and a magnetic field are after you get below the electron into the preton level. So our definitions of fields are going to be very different. The other ones are E equals MC squared, the gravity model, F equals MA, and, and a whole bunch of other things, but these are generally the ones we're going to start with. The other um, models we're going to are the new electromagnetism, electron and proton. These are not the ethereal mo mechanics models, but these are going to be the gateways to the ethereal mechanic models. And if you want to see the derivation of these, you go to my website in the docs subdirectory, which is browsable. There's one for ne.pdf and the mass models uh, go into newgravity.pdf. Okay, but for electrical engineers, you should view these like equivalent models. You know, in other words, like the same models, you like, like Norton equivalent or the Thevenin equivalent or many other things that electrical engineers are used to using to get answers even though they don't have the real thing in front of them. They're not complete but they are gateway models that will help us get there. So what's next? We're going to use the gateway models to demonstrate the effects of gravity. How gravity actually develops a force to pull a body toward a mass that's consuming ether. Um, thank you for, I've been getting some donations. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, if you could subscribe, get the, please get the word out. 
Uh, donate if you can. Go to my website. There's a donate button. And uh, no more voodoo physics. Thank you.